by analogy with mythology, today's events, the war, are like Ragnarok, but which side of the forces are current participants on? How to define my own role in this? Thank you for your answer. Here, colleague, let's go back to the moment when we talked about the light and the dark side, about light and dark and how to distribute them correctly, according to two magical paths, the apprenticeship and the reincarnational path. The light ones deal with people, the dark ones, with science, mysteries, the depths, with oneself. But this only applies to magicians, the manifestations which are reflected in people can certainly result in being turned upside down. And besides, in the human world, some of the concepts have a slightly different connotation than in the magical world, as I have repeatedly mentioned, thus, from the point of view of the human world, the concepts of the light and the dark ones are completely different from those in the magical world. I've already told you that from the magical perspective, they have to do with a magical specification. A specialization of activities in the process of self-manifestation of one's own presence here. In the human world, they have more to do with morality. The light ones are good, and the dark ones are bad. Why is that? Well, it is the human psyche that determines that all good things happen in the light and all bad things happen in the dark. That sneaky thieves live in darkness, whereas honest people live under the light. These attitudes are built into the culture, we think that we are doing something good, but absolutely everyone thinks they are doing something good. Is there anyone who will say about oneself, yes, I'm a mean person, so what? Of course, not. And those who are now defending their land in Ukraine believe that they stand on the light side and, for the same reason battle against the shadow orcs, but also those who are called, the shadow orcs, somehow believe that they are on the side of the light ones and are fighting against dark spawns of Satan himself. Everyone considers themselves light, and everyone calls each other fascists. So which of them is right? It's a matter of self-justifying. Those who attack the country consider themselves absolutely right in this action. Because no one ever does anything without first finding a very noble, light, and honest self-explanation of his act. Exactly like the opposite side who believe the same thing. I assure you that Hitler, with all his army in power of the Third Reich, went to conquer both the Soviet Union and the whole of Europe, particularly the Soviet Union, with a very noble mission to rid this land of Judeo-Bolshevism. And everyone firmly believed in this. No one thought they were waging wars of conquest. It is clear that leaders of the Third Reich understood that the Germans bred like rabbits and needed a new living space. But they didn't tell their soldiers about it. And all who went to the war, from the colonel to the last sergeant major, were sure that they were undertaking a very noble mission implicitly expanding the space of the Third Reich, when the Romans were waging wars of conquest against Europe, they were absolutely sure that they were bringing the benefits of civilization, of Roman civilization, to the whole barbaric world, and no matter that rivers of blood were shed and none of these people who received the benefits of civilization survived. To whom did Romans bring their benefits? That's unclear. But it is an individual matter that must not be generalized. Was that a noble mission? It was. And it's always the same. Therefore, you're making a terrible mistake when you start dividing the warring sides into the light and the dark since everyone considers themselves to be the light ones and the opposite side to be the dark ones. And I tried to explain what this is in the first part of our meeting. 
The mind is incapable of understanding how it is possible for so much blood to be shed for the sake of some social experiment. As I already have said at our previous meetings, Colleagues, there is never one single author nor a single winner of a process, especially one of such a global scale. Those who benefit from this or the other event do not always initiate it. They are just like polyps, attaching themselves when they feel that there's a benefit. Can we say that Ukrainian or Russian oligarchs are the ones who initiated this process just because they are making huge amounts of money on hydrocarbons, transit, or whatever else? If we take a one-sided view saying, yeah, well, seek who profits from it. As the Romans taught us, look to who is going to profit. That's right. These here made profits, and it's them who started the whole thing. Hang them, hang them all. And then you look around and say, hey, here's another one profiting from it. And there are many more who are making profits today or will get in the future. You start to expand your picture of the world and see a lot of those who are trying to make small or big profits. So who did this? Who started all this? And that's when you start to realize that it's not as simple as it seems and that all those who are in one way or another, more or less benefiting from this process, just happen to be at the right time, in the right place, and simply seize the moment, and have very likely nothing to do with its initiation. Those who initiated all of this don't advertise themselves. Because the people who start such processes are not quite people, firstly, and secondly, they have long-term interests and plenty of time. So they can afford to get winnings many years later when none will remember what was the cause for these very benefits. Do not divide people into the light and the dark ones. It's not your prerogative, believe me. Your prerogative is to determine who is your friend and who is your foe in this test conflict. And it doesn't really matter what color he is. Whether he is light, dark, green, blue, or some other pretty color. And by the way, the word orc refers to an ancient deity, the Roman, or rather the Etruscan deity, who performed the function of an underworld demon who punishes for broken promises and vows. That's just a little bit of extra disclosure of the insulting word Bork. There are two sides of it, as you can see. Tolkien's Orc is a bloodthirsty animal that can only kill and eat the flesh. But this other orc doesn't seem so bloodthirsty any longer, he even seems to have a sense. Even a kind of noble sense, I'm not saying this to justify or protect someone. I want you to remember that each person who took up and pointed a gun at the opposite side has a dozen self-explanations about the rightness of his actions. Each one and when two barrels of a gun are staring down at each other, every side has quite righteous motives. I remind you that there are no idiots who believe, I'm a freak, and I'm gonna kill everyone just because I'm a maniac. I'm just a maniac and freak, and what are you gonna do to me?
Even complete maniacs who should be put away forever in a straitjacket, in an asylum have such a massive goal and mission within them that will justify any of their actions. That's how people work. This is exactly what the Christians did when they massacred the heathen tribes. And so did the Romans. And this is what the Muslims do while, in the name of their God, sparing neither their own people nor the others. That's how people are. They are just people. And that's how their consciousness works.